Hey, what up, YouTube? It's Casper, so what's my last thing? We're to what happened in John Deacon, the sad story. I've been really trying to learn more about John Deacon, so I did like, cool, like search it up, and this is the first thing that came up. I hope it's not sad. Well, it does say the sad story, but I hope it's not like heartbreaking, but I do want to learn more about Deacon. What happened to John Deacon? John Deacon was a legendary bassist for Queen, one of the most successful rock bands in history. However, yeah. despite winning multiple awards and even getting inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, John Deacon quietly left the band years ago. So, what's the secret behind his mysterious departure, and what has he been up to all these years? While he never took center stage alongside May and Mercury, John Deacon was a driving force behind the band. Back when John was still in Queen, he was one of the songwriters for the group, and he laid the groundwork for numerous top ten hits. It's just so Another one bites the dust, you're my best friend, and I want to break free. And he even co-wrote their smash hit, Under Pressure, as well as One Vision and Friends Will Be Friends. Born on August 19, 1951, the now 69-year-old John Deacon joined the band in 1971, roughly a year after the founding members changed their name to the iconic Queen. He was known as a quiet type who could play the bass extremely well. And he also had some skills with electronics, yeah. making him a prized asset to the band over their former bassist, Tim Staffel. Replacing Staffel was monumental, since it was Tim who met Freddie Bulsara at Ealing Art College in London. And it was Tim who eventually who met Freddie Bulsara. There was another guy? I feel so bad for him. I feel so bad for him. At Ealing Art College in London. And it was Tim who eventually got Freddie to join the band. You'll know Balsara by his stage name the iconic Freddie Mercury who frontlined Queen throughout their rise to stardom. John's quiet and down-to-earth demeanor was welcomed by the wild rock stars who wanted a band member who wouldn't clash with their personalities. However, the very qualities they prized in John would later drive a wedge between him and the rest of Queen, causing John to leave the group at the height of their fame in spite of their success and the pivotal role he held in the band. Shortly after he joined, the full classic Queen lineup was solidified with Deacon on bass, Mercury on vocals, Roger Taylor on drums, and the mastermind behind the group, Brian May, on guitar. Together, they recorded albums. Brian May is the mastermind? Oh. Okay. Toured okay. and amassed a number of hits that they later compiled on their greatest hits album from 1974 to 1981, which went on to become the best selling album in UK chart history with a record 900 weeks on the chart. Queen's fame dipped in the early 80s following a few albums that didn't quite live up to the standards that fans expected. Their lull didn't last long though, as Queen was once again skyrocketed back into the limelight after the Live Aid performance in 1985. We even did a whole video about Queen's legendary Live Aid show. So after this video, check the link in the description to learn why Queen's Live Aid show was the greatest concert oh, of all time. Maybe one day. Unfortunately, after the incredible Live Aid show, Mercury's health began to decline as he began to lose his battle with HIV. Freddie's untimely death in 1991 shook the soft-spoken Deacon, who later recalled, As far as we are concerned, this is it. There is no point carrying on. It is impossible to replace Freddie. After Freddie sure. passed away, Deacon played only three more venues with Queen. The Freddie Mercury Tribute Concert for AIDS Awareness in 1992, a charity concert in Midhurst in 93, and so after a four-year hiatus, he returned to play the opening of the Béjar Ballet in Paris in January of 1997, where he performed The Show Must Go On with Elton John. After these few fleeting concerns, Deacon formally retired from Queen. However, his retirement wouldn't last long, as just a few months later in October of 97, Deacon quietly picked up his bass again to join Queen in the recording booth as the band crafted their final song together titled no one but you, only, only the good die young. Then, after this that, final that farewell, song was beautiful, by the way. I did really like it, but it, it did make me emotional. A tribute to Freddie and their band's amazing success story. Deacon left music behind completely, never to return. In the documentary titled "The Show Must Go On: The Queen Plus Adam Lambert Story," both May and Taylor expressed their side of the story when Deacon left. They said Mercury's death caused John to freak out because of how close he was with the star. It turns out, Mercury kept John stable and helped him cope with the pressure of being in such a famous band. Without Freddie, 
Deacon just couldn't handle being under pressure anymore. So, I see what, what is John there. Deacon doing now? Unsurprisingly, the soft-spoken hard rocker has kept to himself since he retired. Rumors speculate he dealt with clinical depression from losing his friend Freddy. John's made an effort to stay out of the public eye, so much so that he even opted to stay home instead of joining Queen during their induction into the Rock and Roll Hall yeah. of Fame in 2001. He even had the option to join the remaining Queen members during collaborations with Paul Rogers and Adam Lambert. But even though he wouldn't have to step on stage to record some potential hits, he still turned down the efforts. Although John kept his distance from both music and public performances, he was still involved with the business side of Queen to help with yeah, fighting. I'm gonna say this. It's a really good thing that he's signing autographs. Not a lot of people do that. A lot of people like feel they're too big for their bitches and don't want to help the fans, but I really like John. Even at such an old age, still signing autographs. That's really commendable. Decisions public performances, he was still involved with the business side of Queen to help with financial decisions. Taylor told reporters in 2014 that Deacon's contract with Queen only extends to financial matters, so he has no social ties with the band. Taylor also described his former bandmate as a little fragile. Although Deacon still keeps an eye on the band's finances, he doesn't actually contact May or Taylor directly, Damn. leaving a cold radio silence between the former bandmates. Despite lacking the hard rock attitude and showboating extravagance that Queen's known for, Deacon still amassed quite a fortune from his time with the band. The Sunday Times Rich List estimated Deacon's net worth at a staggering $103 million as of 2011. But after the smash success of the 2018 semi-biographical movie Bohemian Rhapsody took home multiple awards, it's a safe bet that Deacon's wealth has only grown thanks to his cut of Queen's revenue. These days, John lives in the lap of luxury in his home in Putney in southwest London that he bought with his first Queen paycheck. While John might not want a spot in the limelight, That's so sweet that he's been living there all his time. That's so sweet. He's not antisocial like his ex-bandmates might say. He lives in Putney with his wife of 45 years, Veronica Tetzlaff, along with his six children. It's no surprise that Deacon opted out of the movie that grossed a mind-blowing $904 million worldwide. Instead, American actor Joe Mazzello, known for his role as Tim in Jurassic Park, played the bassist on the big screen. John Deacon gave the remaining band members his blessing to take the band in any direction they chose, while Brian May and Roger Taylor never hear from Deacon anymore, and even though he continues to remain out of the public eye, John Deacon will go down in history as one of the greatest bassists of all time. Mm. So that's the story of John Deacon's life after Queen. What are some of your favorite Queen songs? What basis would you like to That's see step so up in his basic. place? Let us know in the comments below. If you rocked out to this video, click the like button and subscribe for more amazing videos covering all the coolest stories in music history. Um, cool Cat is pretty good. Black Chat, play the game. Um, Bohemian Rhapsody is one of the biggest songs. I don't know. Uh, a lot of the songs from Live at the Rainbow were pretty amazing. Um, I thought it was going to be a lot sadder, so I'm really happy it wasn't, you know, he lost his best friend, so obviously he's going to be sad, and Freddie was a focal point, or the focal point of the band as a lead singer, and I feel like, you know, he might have thought that singing with, like, Adam Lambert and stuff like that would be disrespectful to Freddie, which I might be reaching, but I would understand if he does feel that way, but... He was also to himself during the band day, so I do understand him in that sense too. He was never like a, a big talkative person, but I would love to see him at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction, I don't know, induction, introduction, and then, yeah, it's just sad that that happened, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video, but I hope you guys have a great day.